Looks like this is it, man. Guess I better say it now. Thanks for everything. It's been a blast. Crow. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're in this together to the very end. <laughs> you said it. So, you've come. I suppose I should commend you for making it this far. You defeated my Iron Bloods, the Anguish the almighty conflagration, and moreover, acquired the powers of the other knights. Those were no small feats. It's true. Each battle pushed us to our very limit. I should have expected no less of those you chose to serve you. <laughs> Perhaps I may have gone a little overboard in my quest to fuel this fortress. But no matter. All the conditions have been met now. The beginning of the end is at hand. However, before that... Valamar, to me! Bring the sword with you! What? Oh, right. He was Valamar's previous Awakener, wasn't he? Hmm. Ring, what shall I do? It's fine. You can come. It's been a long time, Dracos. Ah, my mistake. In this life, you were known as Gilead Osborne, correct? Call me by any name you like. You have my thanks for looking after Reen. Moreover, it seems you've recovered your memories. Indeed. I owe that to Leanne. Yeah, and it's thanks to her I can do this now. Ah, Milliam. I'm glad we were able to talk like this once more. I will have to give my thanks to Leanne for both of you. Yeah, she was a pretty incredible person. I'm glad to see you too, Gramps. <laughs> I welcome you as well, other members of Class 7. Elisa, Machius, Eusis, Elliot, Emma, Fee, Gaius, Muse, Selene, Ms. Valestine, Laura, Kurt, Black Rabbit, Yuna, and Ash, I must apologize to you three. But you, especially, Armbrust. <sighs> oh, where's this coming from? All I ever wanted was to settle the score for my grandfather. I might have taken it a bit too far, but then again, so did you. <laughs> Most definitely. How can he be so calm? He seems so composed and confident. This is the kind of iron will that belongs to the greatest chancellor and the Lionheart Emperor. Not only that, but this man is also the Awakener of the Ebon Knight, and Instructor Reen's father. Gilead Osborne. Even though I've known you're my father for some time, it didn't feel real until now. That's not to say I don't still consider Teo Schwarzer my father, after all he did for me. <laughs> I'm sure Teo would be happy to hear that. You are his son, just as much as you are mine. In the same way, you are both Lucia's and Kasha's son. Perhaps you could even be considered Leanne's son as well. I suppose you may be right. We finally learned the truth about you from glimpses of your past in the reflecting pool. 
We saw what the curse did to you. How you fell into Ishmelga's grasp. You became one with the Ebon Knight. Yet you managed to retain your personality, thanks to your iron will. In the end, you were the one who chose to become the Empire's enemy. The world's enemy. Our enemy. We knew you'd stop at nothing to reach your goal. If we didn't step in to stop you, you would have destroyed the world without the slightest hesitation. But I'm sure you didn't expect us to fight back so successfully with Mille Mirage and the Radiant Wings. No matter how the rivalries play out, we still have a chance of stopping the end. Agreed. Radiant Wings in particular was a surprise even to me. Yes, indeed. You've done well. In the last moments of my life as Drykos, I despaired for the future the curse would bring. Because of that, Leanne felt an unnecessary obligation to take things into her own hands. But seeing all of you here before me, it would seem my fears were unfounded. <laughs> we saw that blade at the Black Workshop. It's as if it was forged with all the malice in the world. Sort of reminds me of the sword Milium turned into. But at the same time, it's completely different. This is another sword of the end, belonging to the Ebon Knight itself. Due to certain circumstances, however, it was unable to be used to slay the Holy Beast. Nonetheless, its power far surpasses any weapon this world has ever seen. Now then, shall we begin the final preparations? I command you, as Dreykel's Rice Arno, he who built your foundation, strike at me with everything you have! Show me the depth of your will, Thor's Class 7! Yes, sir! Yes, Your Majesty. You shall kneel at the foot of the lion. Clean! Brilliant design! Leave it to me. My turn. Azure Cleaver! <clears throat> it's off balance! Take <clears throat> this! Yeah! Ha! This one's on the high! <clears throat> Leave it to me! Locked and loaded! Fire <clears throat> away! <clears throat> I won't forgive you! My turn! You won't get away! Molten Storm! I'll handle this! I appreciate it! Thanks! It's my turn! Triumph! Avalon Heart! Leave it to me. Behold, the soul of our saved. Now. Gradient <laughs> Phoenix Blade. It's my turn. Petrifying shells loaded. You're not going anywhere. They're down. An opening. <laughs> My turn. Ha! <clears throat> now! It's mine! It's time to get a little serious. Northern Lightning! <laughs> that make you feel tingly? <laughs> I 
I didn't expect to relish this so. Stand proud! Dominion roar! Judgment time! Eat this! My turn. Ready? Ha! Ha! You're done! <clears throat> It's my turn. Let's go. Away with you! Let's go. Hold! Now! It's mine! Is the power of the soaring phoenix. Golden seed that's deep in my soul. Imbue my spear with the fury of the goddess. <laughs> this is far from finished, young lions! Ah! I'll save you. Thanks. Let's go! Roar! <sighs> ah! Heal it strike! Here I go! Time barrier! Break! My turn. Eternally calm. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. First. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Seventh. Eight leads. Breaking dawn! My turn. Thank you. I'll save you. Thanks. This is nothing. Ha! Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the help. Very well. Uh, ah! My turn. Prepare yourself. Ah! Shatter! <clears throat> it's down! They're mine! <clears throat> My turn. Yeah! Thanks! <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> Let's go! Ah! Uh, Helix 
Very well. Prepare yourself! Ha! Shatter! Mm. It's my turn! Uh, I'm up! Emptiness. Emptiness is born. First. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Seventh. Eight. Eight. What is the best? Ugh. Most impressive. It's ready. The time has come. The time for the seven fragments of power to clash and become whole again. Now they will vie for control over the reformed Great One, the being which holds the infinite power of two Septarians. Wait! Father! We had planned for the final rivalry to take place once the war below had reached its climax. It's too early. We must wait another day at the very least. Otherwise, there won't be enough energy. The Reformation will be incomplete. It's final. There is more than enough strife in the world to suit our needs. Some battles begin long before any blood is shed. And this is no different. You're exactly right. Let's get this over with. Right behind you. We'll provide support. Thanks, guys.
holds nothing back. You must face me with all the strength you can bring to bear, all your determination, the entirety of your potential. If you do not, I, Gilead Osborne, will bring all you know to ruin. You asked for it. I promise I'll fight you with every last fiber of my being. The time has come to settle this! Let's go! There! Oh! Shit! My turn. Over here! They're down! You're wide open! Here I go! Ha Let's get them! They're mine! Too easy! It's my turn! Get back! <laughs> now! An opening! <laughs> Moving out! Darkness! Sunder them! <laughs> the end is now! Burn away in a blaze of glory! Let's go! Now, bring it on!
my turn. Yeah! You won't escape! <laughs> to me. My turn. It's down. At once. Leave it to me. So this is... The power of the final rivalry! Yeah, this is it then. Vanished. Screw the rivalry! Let's go after him! Ordine, let's fly! As you command.
Now, Reen, this is where it all ends. There is no turning back for you any longer. You know that, yes? I do. I'm also aware that my role as the sacrifice was nothing more than a backup plan. Even so, I will put everything I am into this sword. Green. Okay, I'm gonna do everything I can too. Thank you, Milliam. The eight leaves one blade and 104 military combat. A clash between swordsmen. And our final act as father and son. Truth be told, I regret never having the opportunity to train you myself. Well, maybe we'll get the chance another time. Someday, somewhere. But for now, prepare yourself, Gilead Osborne. Then come, Reed Schwarzer. Pale darkness! Something's coming! Seriously, you always have to make us worry to the very end, don't you? Crazy bastard pulled it off. Huh? Is something the matter, Crow? Wait, where's Milliam? I'm right here! Oh, don't scare me like that. The Ashen Knight has won. This should put an end to... Milliam? What's wrong? I had a feeling this would happen. Huh? What do you mean? Okay. This just might work. What do you think, Falimar? Can you make it? Yes. All of the powers have converged in me. Breaking through the atmosphere should pose little trouble. What? You... Breaking through... the atmosphere? No! It can't be! You can't keep it under control any longer, can you? The curse is true form. The endless malice of Ishmelga, the Ebon Knight. That's right. Relinquish it to me. Your soul, 
your entire being. Yes. Yes. So, this is it. The being that ate away at Emperor Dracos and my father. When the Ebon Knight was corrupted by Mouse, its logic system awoke as its own self-conscious entity. Evil personified, it sought to become an almighty being, controlling humanity by spreading its curse. But now, it's been torn from its physical form and brought to our plane. Making this my one and only chance to destroy it for good. Wait, no! What are you going to do? Th there has to be another way! You bastard! Screw you! And screw your bullshit plan, too! Agreed. It's far too early to give up. His hair changed color. Does that mean he's back to his old self? I am. It must be because Ishmelga's hold over me has weakened. Elisa, please forgive me for everything I've done these past ten years. Father, it's finally you! Reen, to the very end, your father never gave up. He knew that the only way to be rid of the Great One was to isolate its essence in our plane. With the blessing bestowed on you by the Holy Beast, you can finish what he started. You mean, the Earth in prison? So that's what it was for all along. It would be worth an attempt at the very least. The Great One is nearly complete. We may still have a chance to seal Ishmelga away if we act now. But first, you must remove that which has become entangled in your soul. We will need the strength of all your companions. <coughs> well, what are we waiting for? Our hearts are with you! And not just ours! Everyone else is with you too! Every single person in the Empire hoping to reverse the Great Twilight and end this curse! Let's do it! What do we have to lose? We believe in you, Reen! So please, don't give up! I won't. Let's do this, everyone! Twilight and establish a spiritual network with everyone else. I'll get Rose, Vita, and the others to help too. Million birds, go! Everyone, please connect your hearts to Instructor Reen. This light! I see. They've almost made it. Elise! Your Highness! Of course. Reen needs us. We have to help him no matter what. It's the same spiritual connection Class 7 has. Yeah, I can feel their presence. It's like they're right here with me.
They must have used their Arcus twos along with His Highness's artifact to create a wide-range spiritual network. Yep, we reached the final branch. Hang in there, everyone. You can do it. Shit. Gonna have to kick this into high gear. Right. Reen, Ash, we're coming. We'll lend you our strength, too. Schwarzer! It's time you showed us your pride as a swordsman. If we can only overcome this, we may bring about a future none of us dared to dream of. All right. Let's do it, everyone! We'll be there soon, guys. Just you wait. Long as we're all together, nothing can stand in our way. Indeed. I shall fight for my lady's future, and for ours as well. Thomas Lysander, we'll need your assistance if we hope to make it in time. Of course. I swear it, as the partitioner. Sounds like now's the time to strike. Rutger. Leanne. I see. When Valimar absorbed the power of your Divine Knights, your souls came along with them. Indeed. We've been watching over you through every battle since. Reen. You are the sum of the hopes of many. Now, show us the strength that lies within you. Bees out there counting on you, and all your buddies beside her, too. Indeed, that is your truest strength, one which each of us lacked. Now is the time for you to use that strength. Join with your allies and purge that vile, pitiful flame from your soul. What? Frankels, you would dare call me pitiful? I will. He is I, and I am him. But you are not us. What is this? Pathetic maggot! Cease your pointless struggle! Eight leaves, one blade, seventh form, void. Enlightened! Spirit unification! No, we're not done yet. It's... 
Ishmelka's astral form, separating it from an Awakener forced it to materialize in our plane. And by trapping that form within the Holy Beast's prison, we've allowed it to merge with a tremendous amount of power. But now that it's materialized, we have a chance, however slim, of destroying it for good. Uh -huh. I see. Is staggering. This is only a fraction of the true might the Great One would possess were it fully reforged. But if we don't stop it soon, it will surely grow strong enough to bring the world to ruin. This thing's no joke! We'll just have to deal with it, right here and now. I'm with you there, but just how do we fight something that huge? What about Valimar and Vordine? Regrettably, my power level is critically low. It appears the reforging of the Great One has drained us of all our remaining energy. Damn it! What do we do? Looks like we'll just have to go it alone then. I beg to differ. Was that Principal Le Guin? Then that means. I've established a spirit path connection. We're coming. I'll use my partitions to provide us some footing. Oh, Wings, take us there! Marcus. Made it! Sorry to keep you guys waiting! We've got your back! We'll be your strength, Class 7! For the honor of our Lord, and to uphold her will! We will be the light that illuminates your path! We've set up a spiritual network from here as well. The Courageous Two is ready to assist you. We can provide you backup with our remote orders. Reen, everyone, please! We're all counting on you! Just promise you'll come back safely when it's over. Sorry, guys. Don't have the strength to fight, but we can at least help you out with our orders. Best of luck. Our future is in your hands. Right! This should be interesting. Huh. 
threat level. High. Watch out! That one looks tough! I'll handle this. Let's go! It ends here! Talk! Rising! I go. It's about time I got this started. Yeah! Eat steel. Berserker! I'd just I'd give, give up, up if I were you. It's my turn. Take my place. I'll handle this. Witness the soul of our save. Radiant flame. I'll handle this. Ready to go! I will not falter again! Ready? Phantom Ray! Rest in peace. Very well. It's time we entertained our guests. Let the party begin! I do hope you enjoy this. I'm ready. Show me you can withstand this! It's my turn! All right. Let's do this. Fleet of darkness, cleave my foes! See you in Gehenna. Four foes! Slayer! Let's go! Hearken to the Aria of the Abyss. Humankind are evildoers, shackled by emotion. Fury, misery, agony, 
enmity. Behold the abyss, for it longs to be forever at your side. Let's go! Dance, as your feathers! It's my turn! Eternally flow. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. First! Second! Third! Fourth! Fifth! Sixth! Seventh! Eight leaves! Breaking Dawn! Not on my watch! I'll handle this. Enjoy. Leave everything to me. I am bound by my chains no longer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your fate is now sealed. You cannot escape death's embrace. Let's go! Good luck. Leave it to me. My soul is one with my sword. Light! Purge my foes! Uh, Gemini, judgment! You. Instructor! Rain! It's okay! I got him! Milliam! Consciousness the Ebonite's logic system gained after being influenced by humanity. It was consumed by malice, manipulated its creators, the gnomes, and spread its curse across the world. In other words, this thing is humanity's creation. The very concept of strife drove its every act. And for better or for worse, led us to where we are now. War forced us to innovate. Conflict 
forced us to evolve. In leading us to such power and knowledge, I suppose you're almost like a god. Exactly. A god with power beyond compare! Become my awakener, and you too can... Sorry. I'll pass. This is the beginning of a new age. An age ruled by humanity. We're going to accept responsibility for our past. The actions that created you. And by doing so, will rise to even greater heights. Farewell, Ishmelga. I'm not sure if you even have a soul, but I hope you find your way to Adios. Finally done it, Reen. Yeah, somehow. To be honest, it feels a little strange talking to you like this, father and son. Oh, does it now? Who do you think held you in his arms when you were but an infant? I do believe I'm starting to feel a bit of regret over leaving you all to Teo. Well, to be fair, I've known him as my dad for quite a bit longer. But I'm glad I was able to learn your true intentions. To meet the real you. There's no doubt in my mind that we're father and son. We kind of share a few of the same tendencies, after all. Oh, such as our penchant for self-sacrifice, perhaps. I can't argue with you on that point. But unlike me, you still have a long life ahead of you. Don't throw it away for others. Use it to protect them, just as they would you. And most importantly, never give up, no matter what. Surely these lessons were at the core of your master's teachings. Ah. <sighs> I see. I understand now. All right? I'll take those words to heart. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. You have to go now, don't you? I do. My time here has nearly run out. I'll forever be grateful we had this chance. To finally meet as father and son. Yeah. Me too. As for Milium, Claire, Lecter, and Rufus, my loyal children of blood and iron, please tell them I'm sorry. Now farewell, my dear son. Goodbye, Dad.
Instructor Reen. So it's over then? Yeah. I guess the society's making a break for it. Yes. And it seems the Great Twilight has dissipated as well. <sighs> That's not the end of our problems, though. Right. The Imperial Army and the Mule Mirage forces will likely begin advancing on each other soon. In fact, Supreme Commander Van Dyke and Lieutenant General Bright may have already taken action. Uh. Reen, your hair! How about that? It must be a sign I'm free of the curse. So that means you're no longer the sacrifice. I'm so relieved. <laughs> Black hair really does suit you better, Instructor. <gasps> you're back to normal now. Good thing, too. I was getting tired of you stealing my look. Glad I got to see the real you one last time. That's... that's right. Now that the Great Twilight's over... I knew it was coming, but... Come on now. I told you I was running on borrowed time anyway. So, how about you guys send me off with some smiles this time around? <laughs> that goes for me too. Milliam? What do you mean? It's like I said, I was a weapon created just for the rivalries. Now that the ritual's done, I'm fading away with it. So it's time for me to say goodbye. Milliam. No, please. <laughs> but why? Damn it. This is not a fate you need accept. What? Falimar? Or Dean? Join me, my siblings. Let us gather together one final time. Very well. Understood. The Divine Knights? Perhaps they return due to the Great One's defeat. Precisely. It feels as if we are awakened at last from a long, harrowing dream. The rivalry of the Seven is complete, and the curse of the Great One is no more. The Ebon Knight has left our ranks, but perhaps that is for the best. Incredible. Seeing them all together. They're magnificent. It would seem all the conditions have now been met. Father! So you were an immortal too, huh? Yes. I became one as a result of being taken over by the Chief of the Gnomes. I'm so sorry, my dear Elisa. We were finally able to talk for the first time in years. And now I must leave you again. But before I do, allow me to give you a gift. The fruit of my long years of research. Divine Knights, I stand before you now as Chief of the Kin of Earth and implore you. Run the Sacrament Program of Lost Zem, the Septarian of Earth. Rematerialize the sword from its concept form and convert all remaining energy to biomass to create a vessel. Huh? What? 
Is this... Precisely, Emma, dear. What we're doing now is the very same act the mages sought to perform back in the Dark Ages. Something normally impossible. But now that we have the power of two Septarians, even miracles are within our grasp. I never dreamed I would see the day when this would be possible. You've impressed me, Black Alberic. No, Franz Reinford. <laughs> All I've done is lay the groundwork. Now I need your help. With pleasure. Divine Knights, I stand before you now as Elder of the Kin of Fire and implore you. Run the sacrament program of Arc Rouge, the Septarian of Fire. Stabilize the soul that resides in the sword, and affix the other to its reconstructed vessel. Right, very Indeed. well. Understood. Of course. Acknowledged. How is this possible? The Septarians of Fire and Earth being used in tandem. It feels so warm. Unbelievable. Yeah. Is this like... Yeah. It's like a super magnified version of the power I used to heal Shizuku. What the hell was that? Man, why are you guys trying to upstage me? I was looking forward to making my big dramatic exit even better than last time. What gives? Why are you all staring at me like that? Have I got something on my... But how? I was fading away. I felt it. And my hair, too. My body feels... whole again. Crow. Your complexion. The color of your hair. You look like yourself again. We did it! But, Milliam... She's still... <laughs> this is a real miracle, huh? But man, I'm so tired all of a sudden. Sorry, just gotta take a little nap. Uh, hey, Milliam! It's okay. I think she's just fallen asleep. Being permanently materialized into our world must have taken a lot out of her. Green! Crow! Everyone. Damn, that's some crowd! I'm glad to see it was a success. Valimar, Ordeen, you're all... We have used up the remaining power of the Septarians for one final miracle. This will be the one and only time such an act will be permitted. Thanks. Partner. Uh, hold on. If Crow can come back, you should be able to as well, right, Father? I'm afraid not. The chances of success are higher the less time a person has spent as an immortal. I've been like this for ten years. This same method would not be able to revive me. No. My lady. Franz. George. 
It may be too late for me, but you still have a chance to atone. Erebonia will need skilled engineers to rebuild, and I know you can fill that role in my stead. I'll do you proud. Sharon, I am deeply grateful for the way you've watched over my family in my absence. I hope that you will continue to care for my wife, daughter, and father-in-law in the future. I... Of course. I promise to serve the Reinford family for as long as I'm wanted. So this is how you choose to leave us, my foolish disciple. I'm sorry. Please look after yourself, Professor. And my dear Elisa, I'm sorry our time together was so short, but what little we had was the happiest of my life. Please, take care. Tell your mother I love her, and give your grandfather my regards. I will. Thank you for everything. I love you, Father. Elmore, is this goodbye? Damn, so you guys are really gonna leave after all we've been through together. Our sole purpose was to contain the power of the Great One. With said duty fulfilled, our time in this world is over. <sighs> Stand tall, my Awakener, son of my former Awakener. and my true friend. It was my privilege to stand by your side through all of your struggles and moments of joy. Machine though I may be, seeing you grow and progress warmed my heart. Ring, I am proud of the man you have become. It was an honor to have been your Awakener. Thank you for everything, my friend. I'll never forget you. Oh yes, Reem, Yusus, Altina, one more thing. When you find a moment, pay the workshop's biological research wing a visit. Be sure to bring the sword with you. So long. something else they did so much for us yes and Franz's final words it seems everything worked out for the best I imagine his excellency would be pleased man can you believe that guy taking the villain role and actually seeing it all the way through to the end Guess that makes him a better dad to us Ironbloods than I gave him credit for. Maybe, deep down, that's why I never took my shot at getting revenge. Then again, since we survived, we gotta take responsibility for everything he did. Indeed. Though I imagine you won't face too harsh a sentence. <laughs> Especially since you still have a promise to keep to Princess Claudia. What? You're kidding me, right? You RMP guys will catch a little flack, sure. But it's the intelligence division that'll end up with a boot up our at. Neither of you will be let off so easily. After all, the Empire will need your talents to be rebuilt.
Just think of the chaos that will ensue as a result of halting Operation Jormungand so suddenly. Ceasefire negotiations will need to be held. Reparations will need to be made. Lifting the curse will do little on its own. The Empire as we know it may well collapse under the enormity of its sins. Which is why we'll need both the Intelligence Division and the RMP to maintain order. Uh. <laughs> well, when you put it like that... I will be the one to bear the responsibility for His Excellency's actions. It is the best way we can go about quelling the unrest in Erebonia and solving the issue of Crossbell all at once. I can think of no better way for us Ironbloods to honor him. Understood. Sheesh, fine. Farewell, Your Excellency. And thank you for everything. So long, old man. Keep an eye on me from Gehenna, will ya? Hey, Princey boy, if you want to take it back, now's your last chance. Looks to me like you kind of just jumped right in without thinking it over. Sure, Ouroboros doesn't turn anyone away, but it's a big decision, you know? <laughs> I've already come this far. I may as well see it through. If I stayed in Erebonia, I wouldn't face any consequences. They wouldn't imprison the Crown Prince, after all. At worst, I might be disinherited, and then Alfin or Oliver would need to bear my burdens. As things are, it would be best for me to simply disappear from the Empire. And given recent events, you seem a bit short-staffed at the moment. I think I may be able to assist you. If I were to be accepted as an Enforcer, I would have the freedom to do whatever I please, correct? I could use that freedom to finally see the world outside of Erebonia. Just like Oliver. <laughs> wow, guess you actually gave it some thought after all. Glad to see you finally grew a pair. All right then, come with me. We can take the Beowulf. And hey, I can introduce you to Daddy while we're there. The Morgoth? You're going to introduce me to him? You mean as your... <sighs> Wait, no, this is surely we're talking about. Very well, lead the way. Farewell, Alfin, Oliver. You as well, Kurt and Reen. Goodbye to all of you. After everything that happened, over half a year passed in the blink of an eye. With the end of the Great Twilight, an armistice was declared on the second day of the Great War. Supreme Commander Van Dyke and Lieutenant General Bright worked together to minimize casualties during the negotiations. Meanwhile, the media reported that Emperor Eugen would return to the throne after recovering from his surgery. This was broadcast around the world, in tandem with the declaration that Calvert played no part in the assassination attempt. However, the truth only ended up plunging the Empire into greater turmoil and spurred a storm of criticism from other countries. Amid the chaos, Governor Regnitz stepped in to try to bring the situation under control. He issued the order for Erebonian troops to immediately return to the Empire. Many feared that Calvert might take this opportunity to strike back, but such fears proved to be unfounded. I can only assume it was because Calvert didn't want to take any chances against the far stronger Erebonian army. For the people of Erebonia, it was as if they had woken up from a nightmare. On the other hand, the people of Calvert began to criticize the Empire all the more fiercely. Fortunately, due to the evacuation efforts on the first day of the war, Civilian casualties were kept to a minimum. President Rocksmith, nearing the end of his term, 
made careful efforts to placate his citizens. However, he found himself under serious pressure from the new president-elect and was made to demand astronomical reparations from the empire. The provisional government in Erebonia, led by Governor Regnitz, was forced to negotiate. As part of the negotiations, he demanded that Calvert pledge to not invade Crossbell. Liberal, Remiferia, and the holy city of Arteria agreed, and jointly mounted pressure on the Republic to keep its troops within its borders. Reparations were eventually made, mostly funded by the Erebonian government, the Imperial family, the Reinford group, and House Cayenne. As the Imperial army withdrew from Crossbell, Discussions began between the Empire and Speaker McDowell. But the Governor General's personal defense force refused to stand down and took control of the city themselves. Rufus condemned their actions from prison, but they refused to back down, and the threat of a Calvardian invasion began to loom. So, the Crossbell Guardian Force, formerly the Crossbell Military Police, worked with the citizens to devise a solution. And on the day of Arkansas's star-studded comeback performance, the Governor General's Defense Force was quickly subdued by citizen volunteers, and Crossbell was free once more. At the heart of the operation were the officers of the Special Support Section, saving their country yet again. While foreign affairs were steadily heading in the right direction, Erebonia's domestic issues showed no signs of stopping. With the news of Chancellor Osborne's death, the nobles he had kept in check scrambled to reclaim their former power. Class warfare broke out once more, and though the Imperial family tried to restore order, rumors of Prince Cedric's role in the Chancellor's warmongering caused their pleas to fall on deaf ears. The Crown Prince's mysterious disappearance only put them in a more difficult position. Just when things seemed their worst, Princess Alfin and the newly returned Prince Oliver engaged the public directly and sincerely. As a result, the Imperial family slowly started to win back the people's trust the continent over. Meanwhile, news of Crossbell's liberation stirred talk of independence in Jirai and North Ambria. Some argued, however, that the ten years Jirai had spent as an SEZ had bolstered its economy and reduced poverty. The issue is still hotly debated, and those in charge are monitoring the situation carefully for fear of more conflict igniting. Though Chancellor Osborne's right-hand man, Governor General Rufus Alborea, was apprehended, Majors Lecter Arundel and Claire Revelt managed to avoid arrest. Not only that, but they remained at the Intelligence Division and the RMP, respectively, focusing their efforts on restoring order to their country. That said, both groups lost their position as government organizations and underwent extensive restructuring. The Bracer Guild regained its former status in the Empire, and for the first time in five years, all its branches were reopened. High-ranking Bracers from all over the continent helped to combat disorder and unrest within the Empire, according to certain classified information from the Guild. Prince Cedric, thought to be missing, had in fact become a member of Ouroboros. There are even rumors that he was made an enforcer, but that remains unverified. Meanwhile, after tirelessly aiding the other great houses, Governor Regnitz, and the Government Accountability Inspectorate for months, acting Duke Eusus Alborea rejoined his allies for a journey to a certain place. Each of his friends had been busy restoring peace to their country in their own way. But now, with the embers of war finally cooled, they were able to meet once more.
A backup OZ-74 unit. So your dad prepared this, Elisa? That's right. He must have worked on it in the brief moments when he was himself. It couldn't have been an easy secret to keep from the Ebon Knight. Your father was a great man. Damn right. Can't be easy fooling someone who's in your head. For real. It seems like the mana inside is stable. And it should be easy to work with such a pure soul as hers. We'll be right here to help whenever you're ready. Go ahead, Yusis. <laughs> hmm. Come on, man. What are you waiting for? Now, bring out the sword. Right. Altina, you should help too. Don't worry. I know it'll turn out just fine. <laughs> That's right, Ali. Be brave. I will. Everything's staple. This should work. Adios, please. Now'd be the time for a miracle. I'm sure we've got one or two left, right? If you're listening out there, these kids need you. A sword. Like you've seen a ghost. Wait, what happened? Last thing I remember, I. Billiam! <laughs> You're awake! Whoa, guys! What's gotten into you? If you weren't gonna tell me what this is all about. It's kind of a long story. <laughs> so much happened while you were asleep. But before we get to all that... <clears throat> Welcome back, Nilium!
Ah, I understand now. However, it seems the situation is slightly beyond the scope of our expectations. The seventh Angus has been lost to us, while the second continues her leave of absence. Though perhaps the biggest surprise is that neither the Stalritter nor McBurn have returned. Well, old McBurn's finally gone out on a journey of self-discovery. Little too late if you ask me, though. As for the Stalritter... It seems like they've decided to branch off on their own. <laughs> That's hardly a cause for concern. The second Anguis is a careful, calculating woman. She's sure to cooperate with the next plan. When she does return, I'm certain McBurn and the Stallridder will follow. And perhaps even Blue Blanc and Luciola too. Though, I think it's safe to say Kruger's never coming back. That makes her the fourth total dropout after Luve, Joshua, and Ren. We've gained quite the interesting little pawn in her place, though, wouldn't you say? The magic swelling in his ancient blood is quite something. A promising newcomer, if ever we've had one. I suppose. Though he still knows so little about the world, he might need a babysitter for quite some time. Regardless, let us leave the enforcers to their own discretion. And, and take, take care, care that you do not follow the same path as the Faceless. <laughs> you all seem to hate my predecessor so much, I almost regret not being able to meet him. Well, you've certainly filled his shoes in terms of personality, at least. It seems all three of you have gathered. So, you've arrived. Welcome, O oh Grand Master. Mariabel, you have done very well. You oversaw the completion of the Phantasmal Blaze Plan, and returned safely. You're too kind. I merely laid the groundwork for the Witch of the Abyss and the Steel Maiden to work their magic. But what of the Septarians of Fire and Earth? I have confirmed their disappearance from this plane. Unlike the Septarian of Mirage, they haven't vanished entirely. But as they are now, it is nearly impossible for them to fall into human hands once more. Is that so? Hmm, I guess we can say things are still going smoothly then. Indeed. Our plan continues apace. Vida searching for a new path, in spite of her continuing faith in me. The heroic death of the proud Leanne Sandlot. McBurn, the former overlord of the beyond, realizing the truth of his home. And even the departures of Joshua, Ren, and Sharon were all valuable parts of the process. Hmm. <laughs> In short, everything that happens is within your knowledge and by your mercy. To be honest, it's simply incredible. Your very existence is akin to Ars Magna. No, I am but a shadow. I exist solely to announce the appointed time to the world. The other Anguis may not be present, but I shall make this declaration here and now. The world has escaped the Great Twilight, extending its lifespan ever so slightly. Three years yet remain, until all returns to primordial nothingness. 
The third stage of the Orpheus final plan, the eternal recurrence plan, begins now. <laughs> 